Hello and welcome back to um, part two of the strip down video of this LG washing machine here. Uh, in the first part we got well underway with um, removing the front from the drum and uh, the weights from the side and just out of interest uh, they weigh six kilos each so, so I put them on my scales in the kitchen so that's 12 kilos and they are concrete inside that plastic case. So that's 12 kilos of weights on the front of the drum there. Now, the next one we need to be doing, and I already um, started this off, off camera because I wasn't sure how difficult this was going to be, is to actually re, uh, release the bolt from the back of the, um, what they call the rotor, I believe. So th this obviously will have to come off the back of the drum. So I basically had to hold the inside of the drum steady, put the um, spanner on the back of here, which is uh, a 17 millimeter um, socket, get a hammer and literally whack that as hard as I could to break that um, contact. But if I uh, had an impact uh, wrench, but I haven't, so I had to just hold the drum steady with my hand from the inside and uh, whack that down to basically slacken off the bolt because otherwise the drum just turns as you're trying to uh, slacken this and it's very tight so that's basically that removed so essentially the back should be able to come off although I'm not going to struggle with it just yet because I'm not exactly sure whether you have to just knock this off I'm presuming you do because there doesn't seem to be any other way that that would be able to come off here. So in order to get the drum out, I have to be able to disconnect these connections. I mean, I've already done the one for the heater and we're just about to take off the earth connection there and put the little nut back on. So what I'm trying to do effectively now is to isolate everything from the drum which is the hoses, the wire connections, um, and also the shock absorbers will have to be removed as well. And that might be a, a little bit of a challenge because I've never had to do those before. But um, for the wiring, there is the heater connections there, which are simple enough. And then what we've got by the looks of it is a thermostat, um, which is connected to the drum like this and I don't know whether that just pushes in yeah it does so basically the thermostat just actually pulls out of its little rubber grommet in there so that is removed we have um, one connection here for the motor and then there is another connection there which I may be for the that might be for the motor, that might be for the hall sensor, but there's a hall sensor in there that tells the control panel, the control board, the position of the, um, the motor and how fast it's turning and everything. So that is going to be the next task, is the, to remove that connector, like so. And then we're going to need to remove that screw and that screw. So I shall put the camera on the tripod here and we will attempt to do that. I think you can just about see that and uh, getting the other connector off means I'm going to have to get this part off. So, but the great thing is if it all goes wrong and I completely bugger this up, pardon the language, but I've already got another machine in the kitchen now, so it doesn't really matter too much. If, it's, if, it, if I ruin it, it just goes to the tip. But it's a chance for me to be able to learn how to basically strip a washing machine down. That there, I just want to put back on there as well so I don't lose the clip. That's what I like to do. I like to try and put the screws back into the holes they came out of, rather than having a card with all the screws. And I just put the screws back where they came from, like that. And then they don't get lost, and I know where they came from. So now we have this other connector, and I don't think that's gonna pull off very easily from behind here. Or is it? 
Mm. Come on, you bugger, yeah. I wonder how easy it's going to be to remove this then. So there we go, we've managed to get the, um, what they call the rotor I think this is, this is the, um, the half of the motor there, it's all lined with magnets around the outside as you can see, and basically um, those magnets are attracted to these um, coils that go all the way around. Um, as, the, as it wants to turn the motor, it energises these coils one after the other, which effectively creates motion in the motor. What this is basically is one big motor. That's one part of the motor and there's the other part and that is effectively what the direct drive means. It's an inverter motor. So rather than all these coils being at the bottom here with a belt drive, they're bolted to the back of the drum. And there is the hall sensor just located in the back of there and that is what that connector's for and I need to somehow get that connector off. So what I might have to do is to actually remove those bolts and remove the, what they call, this is the stator I think, this, this part here. So I will need to use a 10 millimeter spanner and remove that. So if I put the camera on this chair and focus that down, It's very tricky this is, having to try and film this when you've got nowhere to put the camera. Let's, there we go. So I'm going to now try and remove this from the back of here. And already there we can see the main bearing as well, that's the rear drum bearing there on the back. And the good news is there's no water got through here. Because when these get really bad, you go all rust stains coming out the back of here and it runs down onto the back of the motor and then runs down the back of the drum, you get a big rusty stain. So, we may have caught this just in time before it did start to leak. So let's remove... I mean, it all takes the weight off the drum as well, this does, so... And then when I've done this, I'll put these bolts back into their holes again afterwards so that they don't get lost. Very simple though, isn't it? This is, this is all the motor is. Just a series of magnets and uh, another wheel with more magnets in. That, that's all the motor is. So there we go, that's all them. Now I presume this just pulls off. Yep, there we go. That's the direct drive motor, removed. And uh, on the back, there's the, there's the connections for the motor. And that'll be the connections there for, this is what I believe to be the hall sensor here. Yeah. So basically that sensor gives the control panel, the control board, the information about what the motor's doing. If that sensor goes faulty, the machine won't work basically, you'll get an error come up, I think it's a TE error if that goes faulty. And what I think happens is, if the drum starts to leak, water will get down onto this and it could um, render this thing useless. So, there we go. I'm just going to put this, if I can remove the wiring clamp from this. without breaking it. One, two. And that will only go in one way round. So now we can put the motor 
complete motor to one side. And that, there's some weight in that as well, believe me. Right, so now we have the motor removed from the drum and we have the wiring connections removed from the drum as well. So what I need to do now is to go on up on the top and I need to remove first of all I might put that bolt back in there naturally. It won't need to go in there because otherwise I won't be able to get the, the drum out, will I? But what I will do is just to put the back in. Interesting to see, yeah, the, the drum will come out of there very easily actually, so I can push it now and hear the drum moving inside. So, there we go. I apologise if this is a little bit boring, who's watching these being screwed back in, but it's my way of doing things that something like this that I haven't done before I know where the bolts have come and what, what they're for because when you've got to reassemble this and you've just got a pile of nuts and bolts everywhere and screws <laughs> and you think where the hell did that one go right so now what we need to do um, is I'm going to have to remove the hoses from the top of the drum and it looks like there is one down there for the detergent and that looks like a U-bend, so there might be water trapped in there, I'm not sure. No, it seems all right. And then there's this one here. And again, they all come off with what looks to be, yeah, very easily. That just pinches together and you can remove that like this. And then this one here. Uh, it might be easier if I remove the detergent tray. That, that'll just pull out so what I'll do I will remove the hose clamps one two three four remove the detergent drawer that will then give me access to the springs when I have to lift the drum out so I'll put the camera back over onto here while I remove the detergent drawer let's just angle that down a little bit there we go So I need my pliers, we're going to remove the hoses, so if I remove them from the taps, pinch my fingers with the pliers line up, come on you buggers. I don't want to play ball. Come on. So that one's going to be a little bit awkward, isn't it? We get the hose off the valve. And it's full of water, which it probably wouldn't be. Let's get that bucket. Where is it gone? That little tub. So I suppose that one will be full of water as well. Um, let's get that one off. There we go. That's that one. And then if I water in that one as well so let's just empty that out there we go there is actually an under tray 
that runs under the bottom of here, so any water that runs down will go straight into there, it shouldn't go onto the carpet, so I'm alright with that. Uh, pliers. So I just want to remove this one, this one, making note that the hot one goes into the end and the two in there into the middle. And then we've got the anti-siphon pipe here. Yeah, that comes off, that just pulls off. And then there's one here as well. That clip. Pull these water hoses off. Again, let's get the nothing in the hot one. Probably will be in these. That one's empty, that one there. That's it. Empty that one in. I'm just draining these uh, hoses of water, basically these little fill hoses. Now I can remove that and remove the detergent drawer from the machine. Okay, control panel. So those hoses are now removed from the top. Let's have a look now at removing the ones off the bottom. So I'll put the camera down here. What I need to do is to first of all remove the sump hose here, which is a butterfly wing nut by the looks of things, which is that going to turn easily enough? No, it won't. So, would it be easier if I had to find the pliers to undo that with? Where have they gone? Well, that looks like a really fiddly little uh, knot. Oh dear, oh dear. This is basically the um, Jubilee clip. Ow! Trap my fingers again. The Jubilee clip that holds on the um, sump hose. And I'm trying to slacken off. And this is being really awkward. <clears throat> dear, oh dear. It's a really. Once it's loose, it just spins freely then. So that should enable me. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, now we have the... That maybe just... How does that come out? Well, I don't really need to take that off, do I? I can just take off the pipe. I'll remove that pipe from the top of here. 
and that's tight as well. It would be, wouldn't it? Let's move the camera up slightly. Because what I want to do is remove that pipe off of here. This is basically the pipe that goes to the um, water level sensor, the pressure sensor, and this pipe, well I suppose it's got to be tight really so it doesn't pop off in use. There we go, it's come off now. That's the pressure sensor. Um, why won't that come off? There it will, there we go. So that's the sump hose out. These can split, these hoses, so that one looks in reasonably good nick, and that's quite good for 11 years old. And now is the shock absorbers. Now how on earth am I gonna get those out? This could be a bit tricky. I'm not sure how I'm going to get those pegs out for the shock absorbers. Basically it's these, these here these fixings that the uh, shock absorbers go on with because there's no other fixings now for this drum apart from the springs and these two shock absorbers. Um, I might be better off going around the other side and see if I can... Uh, I think you basically have to squeeze the other side of these together to be able to push them back through. Yeah, that's going to be tricky, isn't it? Let's get my mole grips. Have a look. Let's see if we can. Earth, am I going to get these out? I'm not sure. It looks like there's a, a tab on the back of them that you have to squeeze and then uh, pull them back through. Oh, this is going to be right fun, this is. Mm. Might see if I can get around the back and have a look. Squeezing a, 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 a tab, basically, that you have to squeeze in with a pair of pliers and then be able to push them through. So, oh, this is going to be impossible. This is going to be the difficult part.
Oh, I've got it. Yeah, that's a bit tricky, that is. There's one. So you basically got to squeeze the back of it and then try and push it at the same time as you squeeze the tab in. Um, so that's going to be a little bit tricky on this side as well. Um, So basically, it is these. Um, they were the li little uh, tricky parts there to push out. There's like a little lug on there, look. And you have to squeeze that lug in and then knock it out from behind. And they're covered in oil and grease. So those are the two shock absorbers now released from the bottom. I'm just uh, going to put those in there. So now, hopefully, this should be made a lot easier now. All we've got to do is remove the springs from the top and then the drum should come out of the machine. It should come out of the machine. So, let's put the camera back on the top. Looks a bit of a state now, doesn't it? springs from out of the drum. And they are in sort of like a plastic. Let's see if I can remove that plastic. Ah, that's how it works. So what we've done, what we've got in the spring housing is there's like a, a top cover which goes over the top of that right there and we basically pulled that out on that side which gives access then to be able to lift the spring up so if I remove that from there as well and the same on the other side so we just basically pull it out and then the same here and that one's being awkward but it should come there we go. So now I should be able to lift the spring. With a bit of difficulty. There we go, that's one. Remove the spring from down the bottom. So there's one drum spring removed. Let's put that over on the side. And then we're going to basically have that one removed in the same fashion and then that one there in the same fashion. Now I'm going to come back in part three for final removal of the drum. So join me in part three. Bye for now.